Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a very, very exciting video. A very fun, very highly, highly requested video. Now, if you've been on my channel since the start of my reading book videos, just like in general, I've been here since I started book videos, you know, I was predominantly a romance reader. I did not go into any other genre, maybe a little bit of fiction, maybe a little bit of a mystery, but like there was no fantasy anywhere near what I was reading. I was intimidated. I didn't know where to start. I didn't understand it. There were so many series I didn't want to get in the middle of. I was safe in my romance bubble and there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to stay in your romance bubble, that is perfectly fine. But if you want to branch out into fantasy, if you want to get into fantasy books, fantasy series, you see people reading them, but you don't know where to start. You don't know which ones to pick up. You don't know what your taste is in fantasy. It's very intimidating. When you see those fantasy readers, you're intrigued. I was intrigued. I wanted to be one of them. I wanted to get into it. I thought it would be fun and it is. And I can't escape it now. Once you start reading fantasy, especially fantasy romances, there's like no turning back. All of the fantasy books that I read have romance in them. We'll get into all the different types of fantasies that I read. I'm gonna be talking about getting into fantasy. So if you wanna get into it, I'm gonna give like my tips and tricks of reading it and how to find one and all the genres and stuff. But if you've already started reading fantasy, you know what you like and everything, you can skip to like this time point and I'll give all my recommendations. So I'm gonna be talking about getting into it and all of like my opinions and like if you want some pointers in any way, not that I'm the pro at fantasy, but if you have the same taste as me or if you were in the same point that I was trying to get into fantasy and you don't know how to, that's what I'm here for today. But if you don't need to hear any of that, hear me babble on about that, you can definitely just go to me recommending the series and the books that I love. You'll see some books behind me or like, here's like my TBR card, but behind me, if you see any other fantasy books that I'm not talking about, these are only the main recommendations of fantasies that I've read that I enjoy and would recommend for you guys to read. I've read a few other series and like other fantasies that I'm not gonna be recommending here because I personally don't like them. So if we have similar book tastes in general and you wanna try out some fantasy recs that I have, these will be the good ones for you and the right ones I think for you. So we're gonna get into the recs after I go off about all things fantasy, how I got into it. Not how I got into it, but like what I like about fantasy and like getting into it as like a primarily romance reader or previously primarily romance reader. I have a lot of recs and a lot that we're gonna be talking about. You're gonna be hearing me talking for a while. So just sit back, you know, get a snack, get a little book. Actually, don't get a book. Pay attention. We're gonna be talking a lot, but you just have to listen. Okay, getting into fantasy, there's so many different genres of fantasy. Now, when you think of fantasy, you literally just think of like a different world, so many series. There's a lot going on in here. I didn't know that. I just thought a fantasy was a fantasy, made up world. That's really it. I was just so, I had no idea. I had literally no idea. So going into fantasy, there's different genres, like sub genres of the fantasy. You can have fairy tale fantasy where it's like a fairy tale world. Think of like Alice in Wonderland, or you can have like a high stake fantasy. Think of like Hunger Games and like different trials and like fights and wars and like that kind of fantasy. Or you can have a folk fantasy. I personally don't really like folk fantasy, but that's like you hear of like folk stories and like folk tales, or you can have like a historical fantasy where it feels like you're reading a book taking place in like the 1800s, 1700s with like a fantasy element. Or you can have a modern day fantasy where it's literally taking place modern day, think like New York City, but there's witches walking around New York City. Those are really fun. You can have a gothic fantasy where think of like themes of like death and like dark background and dark undertones within the story. And then you have dystopian fantasies, which are some of my favorite. It's obviously made up. It's a fantasy world, but it could feel real in some weird sense. Then, like I said, all the fantasies that I read have a romance within them. Like I won't read just like a high fantasy that's like no romance involved. I just, you won't catch my attention. Like I need to cling on to some type of romance. So once you get into a fantasy, there's obviously like the world building and everything, but the romance romance is either heavier in some or lower in some. So when I give the recommendations, I'm going to be telling you if it's a higher romance level of a subplot within it, or if it's like not that much, but like there's some of it and it's good, but there's always romance in the books I'm going to recommend and always the fantasies that I read. I need to know if there's a romance in it. Like even if it's small, there's different levels to romance in fantasy books, at least the ones that I read. So the books when I recommend you, I'm going to tell you the romance level. And also if it's easier to understand, if you haven't read a fantasy book, I've separated the recommendations I have to ones that are easy to understand. You're not going to be very confused. It's not hard to comprehend what's going on. And then I've separated to like more world building, more politic heavy. And when I say politic heavy, you don't know what that means. It's basically when you're in a fantasy world, obviously you have to build up the history of it. Like how did they get to where they are today? Is there Was there a war that went on and two sides of the world are fighting? Is there a king who's the ruler? Like there's politics to the world just to understand the world. Like that's basically the politics of it. Some are politic heavy where you have a lot of background and history. Some aren't like politically heavy. Some are just like fun and easy to follow along. So I separated those into if they're like easier to understand or like you have some world building or more world, bu world building, less romance. So I separated those. Getting into actual what I like about fantasy being like a romance reader. First point is it has to have, like I keep saying, even like the smallest crumb of romance in there, I need to hang on to something. Even if it's not like stated or like made to be like a big romance subplot, like I will hang on to it and I will make it bigger than it is. Like I need romance in my fantasy book. If there's no romance, I can't do it. And that's not for everyone. Some people don't really care. Some people aren't in it for the romance. I just, as a romance reader, need a romance in it. So if you're like that, all of these, 
have romance subplots or main plots so one thing though is don't go into fantasies even if you hear or see a quote that's like a romance type of quote in a fantasy book of like what the main characters are saying to each other and it's like a really nice quote don't go into that book expecting it to be high heavy romance unless it's like extremely stated because I've done that I've gone into a fantasy book like excited for the romance and it's like more world building more politics more fighting and stuff and you get like small crumbs of the romance so it's easy to get disappointed seeing a really good quote of a fantasy book and expecting it to be like heavy romance and you only get like that one scene that you saw on TikTok don't go into fantasies thinking that you're gonna get like the biggest romance story ever unless you know that's like the main plot of the story or like the subplot is bigger of a romance because it's easy to get disappointed I have in the past because I love romance in any book in every book so don't go into fantasy books expecting it to be heavy romance unless you know for a fact or you've seen enough of it to know there's a lot of romance in it because it's easy to get disappointed and you get bored pretty easily when you're expecting a lot of romance one major thing that really intimidated me getting into fantasy is that most fantasy books are part of series and I just don't don't know why it just that's how it is just the series never end I mean they do end eventually but some are like in the middle of series and some aren't completed some are like five six books some are just trilogy some are two books like fantasy books for some reason have more to it because it's a new world and it's like you're creating such a world that like you can continue on with the story and you'll see like after reading like the first book of a fantasy series more times than not it ends off on a cliffhanger on a plot twist and that's what I love so much about fantasies like you just don't see a lot of the story coming and it just takes you completely off guard but again fantasies are more often than not part of some type of series so just don't feel overwhelmed seeing a fantasy series and like you're like I don't want to start an eight book series right now just read the first one see if you even like it you don't have to continue the series if you don't like it then that's that you don't have to continue it but it's also okay to start a series and some people are different but it's okay to start a series read a different book in between it go back to it I've continued series that I've been in the middle of and I've had to literally read spoiler summaries of books because I just don't remember it but it's fun to get back into that world back into the characters just escape reality to like the next level because it's a fantasy world so don't feel overwhelmed it's very hard not to when you're getting into fantasy because because there's so many that are just in big series and this was a hard one for me to let go or let go of because when I was reading romance I specifically looked for books that were in just standalones like nothing connected because I didn't want to be like attached to or like felt like I had to continue a series because at first I was like I need to finish the series before I move on to any other book but like eventually you kind of get out of that I feel like and I feel like you could slump yourself out easily if you're reading a series and you're not reading any other books like you can go between books like don't feel intimidated by that but just know fantasies are like more likely than not part of a huge series and again I just don't know why they literally never end but they're so fun when you like one and you're like okay I could read a book about these characters forever and they're like oh my god there's five books you get excited so just try not to feel overwhelmed by that because once you start getting into fantasy series it's more fun but it's definitely intimidating at first because there's just so many books also fantasies or I feel like most of them or a lot of them have lengthy books like they're pretty long some of them go up to like thousands of pages but I feel like usually the range from fantasies I read are like 400 to like 600 pages that's like the average you have to create a world create characters and then have a plot and it's a lot that you have to get in usually they're long so again reading other books in between that so you don't slump yourself out like a cheesy little romance or something like that helps a lot because it's easy to get slumped in a series a long thick series because they're so long unless you're like obsessed with it so usually I try to read other books in between sometimes I'm just in a complete fantasy mood and I do not want to read any romance book any contemporary book so it's all personal it's how you want to feel about it and how you want to go into it but this is just what I did and how I felt about it I was completely intimidated but I'm trying to help you guys if you are also intimidated not to be just try it out we're gonna try it out here that's why I have some fun recs for you guys you also just have to trust the process of fantasy books once you get into one and start one it's confusing you don't know the world you don't know the characters you don't know anything about it what I usually do is I give myself the first like 50 to 100 pages without stopping well I stop but like without questioning it or like being really confused because after that things just start to click in place and make more sense as you continue reading like the first like 20 to 50 pages of a fantasy book I am just like no idea what's going on no idea what's supposed to be happening no idea literally anything once you get more into it and read more of the pages like it just makes sense and that's like finishing the first fantasy book of a series and you're going into the second one things just start clicking and making more and more sense and like lots of things are happening but you just have to keep reading and I know that's hard because once you start a book you just feel like dumb you're like I don't understand what's happening like this is just like not for me but that's okay I feel dumb every single time I start a fantasy book and that's so completely normal because I'll start a book and I have no idea what's going on at all but if you just keep reading and you let yourself feel dumb for a little things will click and you're like oh no, this makes sense. I feel like the authors do that on purpose. They just kind of throw you in or they'll try to create the world and it's really confusing at first, especially when they try to give you the history of the world or try to talk about all the different parts of the world. Like you have the map in the beginning. I completely ignore the map. Sometimes I'll go back to it if they like talk about a place, but I ignore the map. It's confusing to me. But once they start a book and they start talking about all these different words and lands you've never heard of, you're trying to keep up with it. But after a while, it starts clicking. So just don't feel discouraged at first. You just have to keep reading and then everything just starts making sense. I have separated the recommendation books by ones that I feel like are 
pretty easy to get into if you have not read a fantasy or you're just starting out these are the ones that i would recommend continuing with before you get to the other ones that i have to recommend that are more politically heavy or just like i feel like could be confusing if you haven't read a lot of fantasy books but that's not to say don't read these like the ones i'm recommending that are more fantasy heavy more like not confusing but like they could be confusing don't think you shouldn't read those first like you could read one of these and be like absolutely in love with it but if you're just a little worried like i have separated them but again choose any of them if you like any storyline or you're intrigued by any of them literally pick up any this is what my recommendation videos are for if you are interested in any of these storylines again if the romance is heavier you like that if you want to try one that's not as romance heavy like i have i have them all here right now for you so you could definitely see me read these on this channel talk about these on the channel but i'm gonna go in more in depth if you haven't read any fantasies or you want to get into them obviously that's what this video is about but if you have read fantasies you want more recommendations i have them all here for you there's a lot we're gonna be talking about so we're gonna start out with the ones that are more easy to get into if you need like a stepping stone into fantasy shall i say we're gonna do those first okay so the first one that i want to start with is a dystopian series and it's also a long series so that may be a little intimidating just to hear that it's longer but it's easier to understand and i think dystopian is definitely an easier fantasy like subgenre almost that it's just easier to read and easier to understand again because it's almost as if you can picture it in like a real world setting but it's not like hard world building and politics they kind of just like throw you in and you have like different things that like the government is trying to do like almost in that kind of way at least that's what this series is so you have a hundred percent seen this series if you haven't read it yet and you want to get into fantasy and this is like one of the ones you've seen highly recommend like do it and i know the reading order is intimidating there are so many books in this series but once you start you want to continue going and you want to see what happens and that's what i love about fantasy but this is the shatter me series this is a very long series and i know it's scary for me to start with this big of a series but like i said some fantasies just don't end this one ends but like it's a long series there's one book i'm missing but it's a novella so you have the normal books and then you have have novellas between each one you do not need to read the novellas novellas are just to help understand the story you have all of the regular books in the main character Juliet's point of view the novellas in between these books are told in other characters point of views to kind of help better understand the story and understand those characters before you go into the next book you can you do not need to read the novellas but I personally say you should it helps the story and you feel for the other characters and understand them more basically the Shadow May series like I said follows Juliet she's held captive by the government that's called the reestablishment because her touch is fatal so every time that she touches someone they die so she's been held captive with the reestablishment, and she has not seen daylight for a very long time and she's been writing in her journal this whole time and she just like it's not allowed out but eventually she gets out of there and the reestablishment kind of want to use her and there's a lot that goes on in the series it takes so many turns so many plot twists but you have a very strong female character and an easy dystopian world to understand the writing is very fast paced very easy to understand and keep up with there's not a lot of world building that you have to like catch up on and the romance in here is heavier than most like it gets pretty heavy and there's pretty big romance subplot in these books like the main plot is about Juliet and her journey and the reestablishment and what's going on with them but you get the romance definitely as the books go on like it's pretty heavy you got a found family in here you get a lot of side characters it's fast paced you get all of that I know it's a long series but if you want to immerse yourself in a series and read one that's kind of popular like this one is definitely the way to start another one that I always recommend if someone wants to get into the fantasy world once upon a broken heart about to be a trilogy so if you want to start this now highly recommend because the third one comes out in a few weeks so this is wait once upon a broken heart by Stephanie Garber and the ballad of never after and then the curse for true love comes out in a few days this is where it gets confusing because some fantasy books have books you read before those like there's reading orders get confusing but i'm here to tell you that this world of once upon a broken heart takes place in the same world as caraval so if you've seen this it's a trilogy by stephanie garber the same author and this comes first i only read the first one there's three of them you can read this first but you do not have to it doesn't completely ruin everything you don't need to read this to understand the world at all this one is like fairy tale fantasy so it's very like magical alice in wonderland like you don't need to understand politics or any wars that are going on like this is just it's easy to get into you can read this first this one's also fun i just personally didn't love it as much like i said this is a trilogy and it's basically about this magical carnival that pops up and you have to get a ticket you have to get invited and the main characters are two twin sisters but you follow one of them they get an invitation to the carnival they've always wanted to go when they're supposed to go her sister goes missing and she is at legends carnival carnival thing and now the main character has to go through all of this and find her sister and go through all the magic and all of that so it's fairy tale it's magical but it was fun because you get the carnival you get the magic like the world is really fun and this one you don't have to read before this but if you want to get into it and you do want to read it in order this is the first trilogy it's carnival and then i think it's legendary and then it's finale some of the characters that show up in this trilogy show up in this series so that's why they say to read this first going into once upon a broken heart and the ballad of never after again like i said think fairy tale alice in wonderland it is so easy to understand anyone could read this anyone can read any of these books but if you really want to get into fantasy and you're like scared that you're gonna be like confused or don't think you like it like this is the way to start and the way to go because 
The setting is magical. It's fun to go along. It basically starts with his main girl. She strikes a deal with the wicked Prince of Hearts and the deal is in exchange for his help with all of this, he asks for three kisses and they have to be given on any time or place of his choosing. And after the first kiss, like she realizes that you don't really strike deals with the wicked. Like you don't do that. So things are going wrong. She just wants to be with her one true love, but things are going completely wrong. And then you have the Prince of Hearts who she struck the deal with. His name is Jax and he becomes more of a prevalent character in the second one, but he's definitely obviously in this one. This one's romance subplot gets heavier. The writing is very easy to understand. It flows really well. The story is just so, so fun. It leaves off on a cliffhanger, but the third one's coming out in a few weeks, like I said, so you'll be able to complete the trilogy soon. Then I have one of my favorite romances, or not romances, favorite fantasies that I've been talking about more recently. This is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This one, think of like a historical fantasy where it takes place, you feel like you're reading about someone that lives in like the 1800s, 1900s time. Like you don't think that they live in any type of fantasy world. Like it feels like a real world and real characters, they don't have any powers. The magic in this book comes from two typewriters that the main characters write on and they work on a journalism together and they are rivals in the workplace but then when they go home they have these typewriters and the main character Iris she writes on her typewriter she sends it under her dresser and it magically sends to the other typewriter and our main character Roman has the other one but Iris doesn't know that she's writing to Roman she thinks she's writing to her brother that's off at war you kind of get their letters back and forth it's very romantic this one is super easy to understand and if you just want like a romantic story but like fantasy elements there's two gods that are going against each other there's not like huge fantasy world building but it's very entertaining and it's very like tender and really sweet. I feel like this one is also perfect when you want to get into fantasy because again it just does not feel like a fantasy book until you get those little magical elements but it's just it's so good. It's romantic like I said. Then we have a series. This one is a five book series. I only have the first three. Actually I have the fourth one. I have not read it yet. There's five of them. The first one I do not have and then the fifth one that just came out I have not read yet. So I read these three but they're all interconnected. You do not need to read them in order. I started with the second one and then continued on. Like I didn't even read the first one and it didn't even change the story. They're all about different characters but you see each character like at some point in the story but like not a lot it does not matter this one if you don't want to get sucked into a series if you want to pick one of these up I highly recommend now this is the entangled with Faye series this one is actually princess retelling so if you already know the princess stories you will not be confused going into this the first one I read was heart of the raven prince and this one's basically a Cinderella retelling you have the story of Cinderella mixed with Faye and magic and things like that but put together you're following the plot of Cinderella but there's just magic involved it's so easy to understand romance is a pretty heavy subplot and it's just a fun fairy tale magical book to go along and like I said it is a series you have all of these you have this one is Taste of Poison which is Snow White retelling Kiss of the Selkie which is a little mermaid retelling Dream So Wicked just came out which I think is a Sleeping Beauty retelling and then the first one is I think Curse of the Wolf King and that one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling so if you like any princess stories or movies and you want to have a little bit of a fantasy mixed in with them these I highly highly recommend they're easy to read and understand and they're just fun to go along a fairy tale world with princesses that almost feel like real people but they have powers and it's fun. So now I have kind of like a sci-fi dystopian type of trilogy. This is the Renegade trilogy by Marissa Meyer. I have the third one. It's called Supernova. First one is Renegade. This one is so easy to understand and go along. It's really fun. It feels like a movie in your head. You have two different groups, the Renegades and the Anarchists. They've been against each other forever, but the Renegades are kind of like the head government. They have the council of superheroes. They have townspeople and just people that can go into the Renegades if they have powers to help out the Renegades. Not everyone has powers, but you have the Anarchists that are against the Renegades and our main character Nova is part of the Anarchists and she's trying to take down the renegades. So in the first one, she goes undercover into the renegades and she has all of her friends in the anarchists that have their own powers. Each power is so unique and it's so fun to see them use their powers, but she goes undercover. She meets our other main character and they have a little bit of a romance going on. Like this is definitely heavy on the world and the fighting and the superpowers, but you have a small subplot of romance that also I love to hold on to and it was fun to follow along that. But the world of this is so entertaining. It's so interesting. You see fight scenes between superheroes and it's kind of just like, think of like Marvel, but in a YA sense. I've never seen Marvel, so I don't know why I gave that comparison. But if you like superheroes, even if you don't like superheroes, because I personally don't love superheroes, I don't really know anything about them in like the Marvel sense, but there's a lot of things going on between them because they're against each other, but it's really fun. I have not read the third one yet, but highly recommend. Okay, then we have my most favorite book of the year at this point is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I feel like if you've been watching my videos recently and you haven't even read fantasy, you may be wanting to read this because I loved it so much and I've been telling everyone to read this. So this one would be a little bit more confusing than the ones that I just talked about because the ones I just talked about are kind of either dystopian or they just feel less confusing like how do you explain that I don't know but this one can be confusing at first but once you get into it it's just it's so good because if you think of Hunger Games and think of like a romance plot of that and you mix the two of them I mean Hunger Games has romance in it 
If you liked Hunger Games, you'll definitely like this. This one is heavy on the romance. Usually in fantasies, there's a subplot of romance. This one, heavy on the romance. When I say heavy, it is one of the main plots of this book, which is what I love so much as a romance reader. I'm eating that up. I ate it up the whole entire book. So as a romance reader, you hear enemies to lovers and you kind of hear in a contemporary romance novel where you hear enemies to lovers that it's like quarreling, they're bickering between each other, but it's usually just miscommunication. They haven't spoken and they're just like mad at each other. And then you find out what happened. It's like, okay, you guys could just talked it out. In fantasy books, when you hear enemies to lovers, it is enemies to lovers. They either want each other dead, they're on opposing sides of the world, and they just can never be together. And sometimes they're fighting to kill each other. Like you have that high stake where they literally can't be together or they want to kill each other, but they have an attraction to each other and they so good. When you have the physical attraction and the attraction and the emotional level, but they can't be together and they almost want to kill each other, there is nothing like it. There is truly nothing like it until you read enemies to lovers in fantasy, like game changer. When I tell you this is enemies to lovers, this is enemies to lovers. So it's this world where there's elites and there's ordinaries and the elites and the king has taken out all the ordinaries they are said to be gone. If you're found to be an ordinary, the king sends his son, who's the prince Kai, to kind of just take out the ordinaries, either exile them or like literally take them out. Or my character is an ordinary and she's kind of living within like the poor parts of the world. And every few years, I think, or something, there's these trials. Think of like Hunger Games. And whenever these trials are taking place, there's certain people that are selected to go. So our main character, Peyton, is sent to go. She has to live in the kingdom and she meets Prince Kai and they have a thing going on. Payton is an ordinary living among the elites and in these trials are all elites. They all have powers and they're all fighting to win and no one knows that she is an ordinary, especially Kai. Kai takes out ordinaries. He sends them away or he kills them. So the two of them, like they literally can never be together. She is an ordinary. He kills ordinaries. Their physical attraction, the tension, the banter, everything about it is incredible. But then you have the trials, you have the storyline, you have the politics of the kingdom, of him getting rid of the ordinaries and everything like that. That just builds up everything and it's so good. Highly recommend if you love romance and you want to feel an enemy to lovers like this is the way to go it is so good but then you have the fantasy that's also just so good trust the process on this one because if you're confused at first it all just ends up making sense then we have fourth wing by rebecca yaros this one i'm putting in this section because i feel like as i've seen this get so much hype and people reading it i feel like a majority of romance readers have picked up this book and fell in love with it if you thought that this was good there are so many fantasies that i'm recommending right now that are just like incredible this one if you're a romance reader and read this and think this is like out of the world which is really good that's why i'm recommending it too if you haven't read it yet but there are so many good fantasies. Like, you guys need to get into fantasy. That's what this video is for. But if you haven't read Fourth Wing yet, highly recommend if you're getting into fantasy. It is very easy to understand. The world building and, like, in the college that she's in, I think could sometimes get a little confusing with all of, like, the different places that she throws out. But our main character is thrown into the writer's quadrant. I think, like, every year there's... When you, like, turn 16 or something? I don't know what age it is. You choose what quadrant to go to and our main character goes into the writers, but she hasn't trained for it. It's very, like, deadly. Like, some people don't make it. Some people die, like, trying to get in. And it's very, like, hard. But eventually, if you get in, you can try to bond with the dragon so you get a dragon like that's what about this that's so fun is there's dragons involved and the dragons are like heavy to the plot and heavy to like the storyline it's really fun when you like learn about dragons and stuff this one also has a subplot of romance there's a lot of tension there but it goes from like a zero to 100 so like at first you don't think it's gonna be like too big but then it's like heavy on the romance so this one's really fun to go along because you have a college setting you have different like things for them to go through to train to become higher up in the writer's quadrant and it's really entertaining but then you have the politics of the college and the writer's quadrant what's going on with them and it's very interesting you get dragons, you get fighting, you get romance, and all of that mixed together. It's really good. So the last series that I'm going to talk about for ones that are kind of like easier to get into if you're starting fantasy is The Lachlan Feuds by Robin D. Mall and L. Madison. The spines of these are beautiful. The front of them are beautiful. These are all on Kindle Unlimited. I didn't finish the fourth one. There's four books in the series. I did start it, but the first three that I read were so fun. If you need books that you just want to start and just sit and kind of binge, short chapters, very easy to understand, very easy writing to understand. There's a romance involved. There's lots of things going on, but like the politics of it are easy to understand. Our main character and another character cross over borders to the enemy territory and they get caught, they get taken captive, but she's a princess so she's not supposed to be there or taken captive or whatever, but since she's in enemy territory she doesn't have a say to go back. So in order to see what they're going to do with her, they take her to the summit. All of the different like clans go together to see what they're going to do with her and kind of decide on that. So you have that journey, you have her and one of the guys from the enemy territory and like their little subplot of romance going on and then the story just continues on and it just gets really good and entertaining and it's really, really, really fast paced. When I tell you short chapters like two three page chapters like once you finish a chapter you just keep going and you can't stop the second book is my absolute favorite like it just gets really good so highly recommend this if you want to get into fantasy as well and just feel like a good enemies to lovers and like plot twists and stuff in a really fast-paced way those are all the books that i feel like are easier to get into fantasy some stepping stones but again if you want to read any of the ones i'm about to talk about that are more politics heavy more not confuse it, but they're just like not the easiest to understand, at least in my fantasy little brain. So first one I'm going to talk about is the Prison Healer Trilogy. I most recently read this. If you see me talk about it on any of my wrap-ups, if you've been intrigued on the series, highly, 
highly recommend. You start obviously with the prison healer of the first book and you follow the main girl Kiva. She works at Zalendov, which is this high security prison. Like no one escapes it. It's like you go there, you basically die there and she's been there since she was little and she's the prison healer of the prison and she like knows a lot about medicine from her father and everything like that. There's a lot of side characters that come in. You're trying to figure out her history, like why she's there, like what happened to her, how did she get into this prison? And then you have the rebel queen and she comes in and the rebel queen has to go through all these four trials. I think it's four, but she comes in really hurt. So Kiva's like, I'll do it for her. This one starts off a little slow. The ending is absolutely insane. The second book is so, so, so good. The third book I gave five stars. This one's incredible because once you start reading this series, and this happens in a lot of fantasy series, you get really connected to the characters. And this one has an incredible found family aspect. And it is so, so good. The found family that you learn to love throughout all these books and you follow along with them. Like if you love found family, like this one's really, really good for that. The endings of each book will get you. Like the, the storyline is so good. You just have to trust the process in the first one, I feel like. But highly recommend this. And there's also romance involved in this. It gets heavier throughout the books. It's not as heavy in the first one. It's a very small subplot. You can hold on to that as you continue the series. But when you get the second and the third one, like it is a lot heavier. There's a lot of tension going on. There's a lot of high stake fightingness going on. A lot of questions you have, a lot of history that you're trying to understand, and a lot of plot twists and cliffhangers. And it's just a really fun story and trilogy to go along. Next one we're going to talk about is the duology that I got into fantasy with Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I do not recommend reading these as your first fantasy. Like you can, you can do what I did. These are like some of my favorite books of all time. I've talked about them so many times. Like one of my favorite books of literally all time, but I don't recommend starting off with these and you totally can. But the same thing with like Carvel and Once Upon a Broken Heart. These two books have a trilogy before it taking place in the same world. So that is called the Shadow and Bone Trilogy. I did not read it. I don't think I'm ever gonna go back and read them, but if you wanna understand the world of Six of Crows more, you can start with that. You follow along different characters, different stories, has nothing to do with these characters, but it's the same world, same magic and powers. So once you start this, you kind of understand it a lot, lot better. You don't get too confused because once you get into this, I just started with Six of Crows. I didn't even read Shadow and Bone. I was confused the first 150 pages. I had no idea what was going on, what these words were, what this magic was. Like they don't really explain too much, too in depth because you're supposed to read Shadow and Bone first. So I almost seen after this after like 100-ish pages. I was like, I literally can't do this. Like my brain is not big enough to read this book, but it is. And all of your brains are big enough to read this. So this is so good. This one is not romance heavy. There's subplots of romance in this one, but this one made me realize when there's subplots of romance in a fantasy, like the crumbs you get are so good. You're holding on to them and they are just like incredible. And that's what I felt in this series. There's a few different romance subplots going on, but once they come into play in these huge books, like it hits really hard. So our first book is about Kaz, who's our main character, but you get different point of views throughout all of the books. The different main characters get point of views and he's kind of like a criminal prodigy. So he is hired to, to go on this heist to get something for another character in this book. Like just think of like a heist is basically what this book is about. So he gathers around six other characters. I believe it's six other characters, literally my favorite characters of all time. Again, if you like found family in books, like this will give you the found family. Like this is, I think my favorite found family in like almost any book. I'm obsessed with this found family because all of the characters that he gets together to do this heist are from different parts of the world. They all have different skills and abilities and they are just so opposites from each other. But for some reason they work. All of them together, them bantering with each other, Kaz being a mastermind. Like you think you know what Kaz is up to for his plan for this heist, but you don't. You will never catch on to what he's trying to do. And it's just so good to go along. You have to trust the process on this one when you're starting this. It's very slow at first. It's confusing almost, but once you get into it, like you can't put it down. Like you need to know what's happening. And then you go into Crooked Kingdom. This just follows along the end of this one and gets even deeper. You know these characters so well that you want to know what's going to happen to all of them. And you're just so connected and the found family in this is just incredible. And cried at the end of this one, like it is perfect. I could read books on these characters for like the rest of my life. I wish there was more books on them. So, so, so good. Now I'm going to talk about two modern day fantasies. Again, these are just like basically take place in modern day world just with like magical elements or magical characters. So the first one we have is One for My Enemy by Olive e. Blake. It takes place in New York, but there's two rival families, rival witch families. So the Fedorovs, it's the father is like the main guy, then you have three brothers, and then you have the Antonovas. The mom is like the main girl of this one, and there's like so many sisters. There's like seven sisters? Hold on. I don't know. There's a lot of sisters on this side, and they are rival families. Her writing is very lyrical at times. It's very beautiful writing, but you also get the Romeo and Juliet retelling between two characters from both sides of rival enemy families and then you get all the other characters and how they became rivals and what the other characters do what their business is and all of that i wouldn't say this is like a confusing story to understand or like confusing writing but olive blake makes incredible characters like they all have just different personalities especially this one there's so many characters to like find out and understand and i think that's the most confusing part is understanding and following along with how many characters are in here but there's like a little glossary part of all the characters in the front of the book and it's almost set up like a play like romeo and juliet yet like act one scene whatever and you have all the characters lined up in the beginning and who they are what they do and everything like that so this one's really fun modern day fantasies are fun but this is the first one and then the other one i have is the atlas 
Six by Olivia Blake as well. This one, I think there's two books. I have not read the second one. This one is also modern day, but this one is more dark academia fantasy modern day, I think I should say. There is this Alexandrian society. It's like a secret society of the world. And every year, I think it's every year, they take the six most talented magicians in the world and the magicians are living in modern day world. They take the most powerful ones and only five of them make it into the secret society. So you have all these characters going in and getting elected, not elected, selected to go in and kind of like having a rivalry, but then there's allies between them and all the characters. Like I said, Olive Blake is great character development and creating and building up characters. And you have all of them that are so, so different and all their point of views as well. This one I say is probably honestly the most confusing out of any book I'm about to show you because the society that they're going in, they have to like learn and learn the knowledge. And I think that gets confusing because there's almost like scientific things that are being brought up. And I was kind of just skimming over those parts. So it does get confusing, but the storyline is really interesting because of the magicians and them fighting their way through this and trying to get into the society. And it's very interesting story. I don't know, it goes really in depth, but her writing is just, it gets really beautiful at times. And I really, really enjoy her writing. Next we have The Serpent and the Wings of the Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is the Nightborn duet. And this is the first book. And then we have The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. And there's also a novella between this. I will talk about that. But this one's Enemies to Lovers is also kind of gives Hunger Games vibes because the main girl character was taken in by the head vampire guy when she was younger and she's not a vampire. So she was taken in and kind of raised along all of these. And I think it's like every year. I don't know, but it's called the Kajari and it's a tournament held by like the goddess herself. So she was been training her whole life. So I guess it's not every year, but she, she's been training her whole life with her father, who's like the vampire guy to go into the Kajari as like a, a mortal human. You see her fighting amongst the vampires, seeing if there's any allies she can have. And this one guy, the main guy wants to be an ally with her. The subplot of romance does get heavier and the enemy to lovers in this is really, really good. But I think the politics, the world building, the fighting and all of that is a lot heavier in this book, but it's also very interesting to read about. It's very fun. It's very fast paced. And you go from like one trial to the next to the next. And it's like really never boring. I feel like the pacing of this is really, really good. And yeah, the main character Rain, I think is like another one of my favorites from like a fantasy. Like he is a good enemy to lovers. And then you go into the novella, which is in between the two books. And it's about two completely different characters in this world. They kind of become bigger characters in the second book, but you don't have to read the novella. I personally really enjoyed it. She did a really good job of building up these characters and these new characters and new world and what's about them. The main guy in that one's a vampire. The other one is, I don't really know. I think she's just mortal and her town is kind of dying. So in order to save it, she has to go to this vampire and a whole thing happens, but it's it's really short. Obviously it's a novella, but she does a really good job with the descriptions of the novella so you get connected to it. Then you go into this one. Obviously it follows along how this ends. And this one is more politics heavy than the first one. The first one's more action and more fast paced entertaining. Usually in fantasies, I don't like politics. I just, I mean, I do. Sometimes they can be very interesting, but I get bored really easily. So this one, I actually really enjoyed the politics of. It was easy to follow along and understand. And I kind of was really interested in it. It's really entertaining. And I loved, loved this one. Like this is a really, really good fantasy little duology. And these are really easy to understand, I'd say, getting into fantasy. But also if you haven't read them yet, I highly recommend. And then following along with that author, I also have Daughter of No Worlds by Chris Broadbent. This is the War of Lost Hearts trilogy. There's three books. Only read the first one. And I was obsessed. I gave this four and a half stars. This one is about Tasana and she kind of has these like little magical powers. When she was younger, she was kind of bought into this and she performs these magic powers to like richer men and stuff, but she buys her way out of freedom and she goes over to the orders, which is an organization she's always wanted to join. And in order to become part of the orders, you have to go through like kind of like a, I don't know, audition, but you have to like train and then show off in front of them and then they can accept you. So she goes to the orders and she's put in front of Max. They tell Max to train her and Max is like, no way. Like I'm not, I'm not getting involved in this again. So they kind of have this like tiff going on between them. She has to stay with Max. So you get like a forced proximity. So there is a romance between them. And Max is just such a sweetheart. He's very pure main character. He's not one of those morally gray characters that you get in a lot of fantasy. So you get her training and all this joining it. And there's like a whole different storyline that comes up and it's very entertaining. Loved her writing in this. Like this one was so, so good. I couldn't get into the other ones, but if you like this, obviously continue the series. But this one is really, really, really fun. I loved her writing. I love the story of this. And it was just so good. Now let's get into one of my favorite trilogies is The Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco. This one's kind of almost like a darker fantasy, but it's basically about these two witches. And when they're younger, they're told by their grandma to always fear the wicked. One day her twin sister ends up dead and now she's trying to figure out what happened to her. And she ends up summoning one of the wicked, Wrath, and they are the princes of hell. There are seven princes of hell. You have Wrath, you have Pride, you have Gluttony, you have Sloth, you have all of them. And she summons Wrath and now they're on this journey together to figure out what happened to her sister. The third one 
is my absolute favorite. Like, I love this book so much. The romance, like, grows between each book, like I said, but the politics of this one is a little bit confusing. But obviously, as you keep going, things just continue to make sense. So if you're confused, like, it definitely clicks eventually. But I always say, I feel like these first two books could be one book. Like, there's a lot of information in these, but it sets up so well for this last one. Like, this last one is so, so, so good. Like, I'm obsessed with this one. So highly recommend if you want kind of, like, a darker fantasy. I feel like this is, like, perfect type of fantasy to read in this, like, time of the year, like, the fall, winter time. Like, that's kind of when I read the first one, I think, in the winter. But you also end up meeting all of his brothers and all of that. And I just think the setting and, like, the brothers, it's very, like, it's entertaining. It's dark, but you also have, like, humor in it. I don't know. I really, really enjoyed this. And then this book just came out, Throne of the Fallen, and it's part of the same world. This is about Envy, one of Wrath's brothers. So that trilogy is completed. It's YA. This one is not YA. It's New Adults. Envy's one of his brothers, and you follow him going on this dangerous game to save his court. And he meets this mortal girl whose name is Camilla, and she somehow gets involved in the game that he has to go on to save his court. This one's really fun. If you like The Kingdom of the Wicked, highly recommend this one because Envy was so good. But you don't have to read Kingdom of the Wicked to read this book. You can just go into this if you want to read about one of the princes of hell and you'll see all of his brothers and you'll see the journey he has to go on. It's really entertaining. It's really fun. Loved this book. I just recently read this. It just came out. It, it's so good. Now getting into another darker fantasy, kind of like a gothic fantasy. And when I say that, the undertones of this book is just very dark. I recently read this. I think the second one's coming out pretty soon. And this is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. Basically in this world, there was this illness that happened and they got rid of everyone that had the illness or they said to so our main character has the illness and there is nightmare who's kind of like a character but it's in her head and like in her thoughts the magical system of this book is just like 12 cards and in order to save the mist that's taking over the forest and in order to get her or get nightmare out of her head and like kind of save her again you have to collect all 12 cards and that's what her and the other main character are going on this journey together to collect the cards and save her and save the mist that's going to take over this one has a lot of plot twists that come up which are really fun that you kind of don't really expect and it's fun to go along because the main character and the guy that she finds that's going on this journey together they have a little romance going on as well and he doesn't know about like the illness that she has this whole thing if you want a fantasy that's kind of giving those vibes highly recommend like the writing on this one was good this is another one that gets confusing in the beginning to understand the cards and the world and her illness but once you understand everything it's so good last but most certainly not least we have the world of sarah j mass so if you are not into fantasy you have seen these books i know you have i know everyone has if you haven't read it you probably want to read it you're intrigued if you want to know more about the Sarah J Mass world I know Destiny has a video on fantasy reads and she's like the queen of Sarah J Mass world so if you want to get more into that because I haven't finished it definitely watch her video but this is basically about the main girl Feyre and she lives in the little mortal world with her sisters and her father and she's kind of like the hunter of the family like she goes out and hunts for them and one day she kills a wolf and she realizes that what she killed is not a wolf it was Fey. Fey are on the other side they don't really interact with the mortals so the Fey come and they say they'll either kill her or take her over to their land and she has to stay with them so obviously she takes that chance and she goes with them and now she's with Tamlin in his spring court. There's all different courts in the Fey world. And I think at first this book can feel a little slow, but once you get into this, it's so good. And once you get into the second one, that's I think where everyone like falls in love with the series. And this one has romance in it, but this one's more romance heavy. There's a lot that goes on in this one. You learn a lot about the world and the characters. You meet new characters that are the found family that everyone's like obsessed with in the series. And you do truly connect to the characters and they become like a big part of your life if you love the series. So then you have A Court of Wings and Ruin. This one's more politics heavy because you know about all the characters you know about the world and now let's let's do more in this world and this one's definitely politics heavy and then oh i forgot you also have a little novella this one you don't have to read but you can read this one's a court of frost and starlight but it kind of just gives more to like the characters and some some scenes with them i don't know i didn't really you don't need to read it but you can the last one is a court of silver flames i just finished this one actually follows one of Feyre, the main character's sisters and her story and everything that happens with her because throughout the whole entire series a lot goes on with all the other characters not just Feyre. like there's a lot that goes on a lot a lot a lot and sarah j mass like her brain coming up with all these stories and different things that just connect throughout all of this the books it's just it's crazy but it's definitely a journey it's definitely one to commit to but it's really good and i highly do recommend if you are interested in starting it it is really good and it also is pretty easy to understand and grasp all these concepts but after that is the throne of glass series which i have now just gotten myself into i just started this last week and i'm thoroughly enjoying it now i don't know if you're either like a nagatar girly a throne of glass girly but i think i'm about to be a throne of glass girly like i like the akatar series but this series so good i think the way to do it is akatar first and then throne of glass and then crescent city but i didn't read crescent city i have no idea what's it about so i can't really recommend that but again destiny talks about all of it but started throne of glass so there's this thing in this series i think it's like i don't know how many books there is but i only have the first three you can either start with throne of glass and then continue the series on or you can start with the assassin's blade and then go to throne of glass and continue the series so people either start with assassin's blade or they read it i think third assassin's blade is basically just five novellas that follow the main
main girl character and everything that's happened to her before Throne of Glass. So this is kind of like, if you read this third in the series, it just feels like flashbacks of what happened to her and then you continue the series. Like I read this first and I feel like it's connected me so much to the main character that I'm invested in what she's doing in this first book and I understand it better and it doesn't feel confusing. And I just, I, I really enjoyed it better reading this first because you see all of these novellas and everything that she's been through before she starts her journey in this book. It just makes sense to me to read this first after reading it. So highly recommend reading this one first, but that's just a personal preference. You'll see different opinions everywhere. That's just how I did it. Everyone should read the series. I have not gotten really far into it. Again, I'm only on this book, but I'm loving it so far. The main character is just such a strong character. I think she's going to become my favorite female main character of any fantasy I've ever read. I'm not going to tell you what the series is about because I went into it completely blind. I had no idea what it was even about. And I think that's like the way to go because it's like very fun and entertaining. There is some romance and flirting and stuff that goes on in these, but that's not a heavy subplot of it. I feel like in the Akatar series, you'll get a lot more romance in that. This one, so far, there is romance, but it's not heavy. It's more of like the main character and what she has to go through. And I love it so much. So now that we've gotten here, those are all of the fantasy books that I would recommend. If you have any questions, if I was confusing in any way, shape or form, please let me know. If you have any, I will try to answer the questions. I think there's something so different about loving a contemporary romance series, but then loving a fantasy series. Like something about fantasy found family and characters and romance, like it just hits harder for some reason to me. And once you get into it, you just can't stop. At least for me, I literally can't stop. Like reading a romance, like I just have to throw one in sometimes, but I'm just like, I'm loving all these fantasy books. And I highly, highly recommend if you want to get into fantasy and you're intimidated or anything, just do it. Just pick up a fantasy book and just try it out and just keep trying different ones until you see what you like in them. And once you know what you like, you can find other books that have the same like tropes and politics in it. And if you like vampires in fantasy, there's a lot of vampire fantasy books out there. But if you like the Fae and the, the Bat Boys, there's a lot of other ones that have Fae and things like that. But if you like dragons, there's other dragon fantasy. There's so many different fantasies and it's just so good. So I hope that you got at least one book from this little video that you want to try out. Let me know if you do. Let me know what book it is. If you have any questions, again, please let me know. I will try to answer them. I know fantasy is intimidating and it's confusing and there's a lot going on. You just have to get into it. Once you get into it, you'll find so many other recommendations and then it kind of just doesn't stop. So I know I talked a lot. I will now shut up. I will now stop talking. Go find yourself a fantasy. Let me know which one it is. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope this wasn't confusing. I really tried my best to kind of explain myself of how much I love fantasy, what I like about it, going into them, and then all the recs. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you're going to read any of these. And if you have any other tips or anything about fantasies for new fantasy readers, leave them in the comments for everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you hopefully in the next one. Bye!